In today's tutorial we're going to work on the Handicrafter Stripes dishcloth and this is called Stripes but the pattern is the moss stitch and I'm going to show you how easy it is to do one of these next. Welcome back to the Crochet Crowd as well as Yarnspirations.com. I'm your host Mikey. Today we're going to work on the Moss Stitch. This is a very easy dish cloth. This consists of single crochets and chain one. That's all it is and if you really pull it apart you can really kind of see what's going on in this pattern. So you can see that there is a space and then a single crochet, space, single crochet. This is using a Handicrafter yarn or Lily Sugar and Cream. It's both made by Yarn Inspirations. You would want cotton for the kitchen because cotton will hold up. So you can use these as dish cloths, you pot holders, um, anything that you need in the kitchen as far as tea towels and a lot of other great things. Because it is made of cotton um, it is safe to put down uh, uh, hot pots down on your countertops and put one of these underneath in order to make it. So within today's tutorial we're gonna learn how to make this stitch and I'm gonna show you how to customize it for the size as well. In today's tutorial you can choose Lily Sugar and Cream or Bernat Handicrafter. The pattern calls for uh, Bernat Handicrafter Stripes. It changes color more slowly and again you can find those kind of yarns available on Yarnspirations.com if you're interested in, in that same look. Let me show you how to do the stitch work involved. So let's start off with a slip knot. Let's do this and I'm using a five millimeter size H crochet hook today. I'm going to tell you how to customize the design. It's asking you to do chaining of 37. Chaining of 37 will take it about eight inches wide which I think is customary. Um, it's a great size. Um, the original that I did was eight inches by eight inches and I think that's great. But if you'd like to change the size and making it bigger or smaller the secret answer is to make it an odd number. So let me show you here. So I'm only gonna do 13. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, and thirteen. So if you do an odd number like this you're going to work out and the pattern will work out the same each and every time. So if you want the exact dish cloth please chain 37. Customizing it just do an odd number just like I showed you. Starting second chain from the hook so just look underneath the hook and go to the second one. I want you to insert your hook and I want you to do a single crochet. I then want you to chain one, skip one chain and go to the second one over and the back loop only and just put in another single crochet. Chain one, skip the next chain, go to the second one over and single crochet. You're gonna do that all the way across your chain. So skip the next one and single crochet in the next, chain one and so even if it's a 37 you'll just have more to do but it's the same thing going all the way across. Just like this and then what it says is to put one single crochet into the final chain. Okay, so it appears that you have two single crochets in a row at the end. There's a reason for that and it's very fundamental and you'll love it why there is a reason for that. So let me show you that next. So let's turn to work and go to row number two. Row number two is the repeat pattern for the whole thing. That's how easy this thing is. So we're gonna chain up one first and single crochet into the first stitch right underneath it. You're then going to chain one, skip over the next stitch which is a solid and then you're just gonna come into the chain one space and single crochet. Chain one, skip the next stitch and go to the next chain one space. Chain one, skip the next stitch and go to the chain one space. Chain one, skip the next one, go to the next chain one space. You're gonna do that all the way across and you're gonna come to the very end of your your stitch. So there's only one stitch left now and you're going to single crochet into this final stitch. The reason why you're doing that if you haven't figured it out yet is that by putting two in the very end like this you can start and stop each of the rows exactly the same instead of having to remember two different lines of code I guess you can say. So let's turn our work and review step number two once again. Let's turn our work and chain up one. So we come into the first one right underneath single crochet then chain one you skip the first one which is the single crochet. This one is the chain one space. That's where you're gonna go. Chain one and single crochet in the next chain one space. Chain one, single crochet in the next chain one space. Okay and you're gonna keep going all the way across like that. So in the very final one you're gonna have one stitch left and you will single crochet into that same one. Okay and you'll keep doing that 
for the duration to get the length that you need. So what I would want you to do is that you're gonna continue to do row number two over and over and over and over again until you get to the eight inch level of what you want to do for the size. So if you wanna change any size, remember it was an odd number, you can make it square, you can make a rectangle, that's your business, it's your creativity. So what are you gonna do at the end to finish this off? Well you need to weave in your tails. So cut your string about 12 inches long and grab a darning needle. If you hear whistling in the background, it's frogs that I have in the backyard. I'm sorry, I can't do anything about it. So we're gonna just pull that through like so. They're in mating season and all the windows are shut. So we're just gonna put down the, put the yarn through the needle and what I want you to do is that I want you to insert the needle underneath and just glide it through the, some of the fibers that are underneath, okay? And go about an inch or so. And you're gonna go back and forth three times. So going in once, going back in the other direction through a different path for two and then going back one more time in the other direction for three. If you go in and out of your work three times like this, your tails will never fall out. If you're gonna use this for dishcloth washing, your tails will fall out if you're not gonna use a darning needle to really get it in there. Okay, so you can cut this right down and you don't have to worry about doing anything silly about that. Now you still have one more string to go. It's the very first string. So using the same concept, I've just turned your project around. Darning needle. Okay, and I want you to go in and out. So just gliding it through the fibers. Okay, so I'm not going into gap spacing. I'm going right into fibers itself. So one, going back in the other direction for two, and going into the third direction for three. So the secret to doing this is three because your work can never stretch in three different directions and then you can safely cut that one out as well now. If you cut it without doing that, you're gonna cut the knot too close to the knot and it will fall out. So now you can use this as dishcloth material and this is a really great concept. So this is a very simple dishcloth. This is using the moss stitch. Hopefully you enjoy and until next time I'm making on behalf of the Yarnspirations as well as crochetcrowd.com. We'll see you. Have a great day.